Vinyl pop figures. I've never really gotten them, never really understood them. At least not the ones that you get from Funko. Anyhow, because I am of the opinion, the opinion, that they are simply the same thing dressed up slightly differently. It's always the same face, the same basic design with maybe a different paint job and different clothes on the body, but that's it. I've not really seen many of them that stand out, that really look different from each other, which is bizarre when you think about it. This obviously is not a Funko Pop vinyl figure. This is Geralt of Rivia from our friends at Jinx, and they've actually done it in a way that I find more pleasing because it looks different. It stands out. It's, you know, it, it doesn't look like the same person just with a false moustache or something like that. Um, but because of my usual dislike of the vinyl pop figures, uh, I've not bothered collecting any. This might change things depending on the quality of what it's like once I get it out the box. That's right, I'm going to take it out the box because that's what you're supposed to do with them. As you can tell, £18.99. If you don't know the name of the company that I got it from, I got it from Game. If you don't recognise the logos and whatnot, that's a company in the UK. I don't know if they do anything overseas or not, but uh, they're certainly fairly big in the UK and, you know, it was on special offer. I think it was going for something like 24 99 but now there was three of them left and they were going for 18 quid. Nice little design work on the box art here. You've got things like skulls, shields, dragons, not quite sure what that is, swords, some guy with a ponytail and so on and so forth. It all repeats, it's all quite nice. And I think it's the same thing on the other side, yep. Here we have the wolf's head medallion. Get all the, the Riv, get all the Rivia, get all the uh, Witcher, White Wolf, and whatnot. Is a member of that particular school, guild, class, organisation, whatever you want to call it. That's his job, and you probably can just about see this if I hold it just right. That's Geralt's figure, his pop figure, actually emblazoned on the back of the box. It's difficult to see even with a naked eye in this light, but uh, hmm. And of course we've got all the obligatory warning, choking hazard and whatnot. So we've got the usual warning, choking hazard, and I've got to admit, if you're going to be stupid enough to put Geralt in your mouth, and you end up choking on him, then you've got everything coming to you that you deserve. What else have we got? We've got the Jinx logo, we've got CD Projekt Red, we've got some blabbering on about how it's a trademark and so on and so forth of uh, CD Projects and shouldn't they mention? Oh yes, Andres Sapowitzki. I'm presuming that's the best I can probably pronounce it. He's the guy who wrote the original novels and short stories that uh, CD Projekt Red got the rights to. And then it continues on in French of all things rather than uh, Polish because CD Projekt Red is a Polish company uh, and there is uh, Sapowitzki is uh, Polish as well and if I'm not going to up your name there I do apologise. Uh, and of course the company is Polish, the Witcher is Polish or at least, I'm assuming, based in Poland, Polish myths and whatnot. And we've got more information here. Jinx.com, TheWitcher.com, designed by Jinx, with an exclamation mark for an I, so you know they're serious. Uh, Conquer Paul Jinx. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, well, I've rambled on for nearly four minutes. Let's get it out of the box. Is that actually sealed? No. Let's devalue it entirely by getting it out of the box and seeing what it's like. Hmm. Oh, that's a bit dirty. Where did all that come from? Security sticker there. Nothing else of interest in the box whatsoever. All right, let's go. Let's just get out the box, out the plastic container. Oof. For a second there, I thought he wasn't going to come out. <laughs> come out, come out, come out, Geralt. Oh, what the hell? Please let him be posable, please let him be posable, please let him be posable. Well, you can move the arms around and that sort of balances things out a bit. He's a little... Let's just move him back a bit. He's uh, a little on the unstable side, I fear. If you can get him to stay on one leg, on one foot, then uh, he does sort of stay in place a bit. Can we move him around to the legs? I think the legs are supposed to move a bit. They don't have much in the way of articulation here. You make him do sort of Shakespearean poses like that, but uh, let's just see. No, he's determined to fall over. Go home, Geralt, you're drunk. 
can we get any more movement here? I can sort of get the left leg to move a little bit, but not much, and now he's sort of tumbling over that way. I think, yeah, it's supposed to be a fixed pose like that. Let's just move him more into frame for you there. But he's not too stable. And if you, you've got some articulation in the arms, but not much, you can sort of do a full rotation of both the shoulder and the wrist from the looks of it. And it looks like one of the swords has fallen off, yep. I'll just leave that down there. This is him in his warrior's jacket armour, which is what he sorts Witcher 3 off in. And you can upgrade that to a better piece of armour if you like. Um, and then just pair it up with some standard boots or whatnot. Does he have any articulation on the head? A little bit, yeah. Gotta say, it feels very hollow. I mean, it'll take a fair bit of pressure to actually do some damage to him, but, uh, hmm. Now he's got his left hand open and his right hand obviously meant to grip a sword, so let's just see if we can get this one in. No, it feels like I might potentially break something if I keep doing this. Probably the sword of... Good God, is this actually supposed... What is the point of having these swords coming out? Let's just take a look at here. here. Let's just take a look at the back for the time being. Before we end up breaking something, let's just take a look at the back. We've got Geralt's ponytail. Ooh, his ponytail is articulated. Huh. Not quite sure what the use of that would be, but uh, we've got his crossbow that he has in Witcher 3. We've got the two swords on his back there. Let's just put him down like that for the time being. His steel and his uh, silver. Steel for regular heavy duty combat, and the steel is meant for combat against humans and knights and elves and dwarves, whereas this is meant for the monsters, because monsters have some sort of allergy to silver. Uh, as such, it's very delicate, but to make it a little easier for Geralt to know which sword is which, the guards are very, very different. Unfortunately, the two-headed wolf design here is a bit skew whiff. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's not supposed to be like that. It could just be a problem with the uh, problem with the process of actually making it. They've got a bit of bend to it. The steel one's actually a bit more solid, actually, but, uh... Uh, yeah, I mean, in general, the plastic feels... The plastic feels okay, and it looks good. I mean, that is a pretty stylized look at Geralt, including his trademark scars and his, the beard that he can grow in, this, uh, in the third game. It's just a shame that I can't seem to get the sword into his hand. So it would look pretty damn awesome if he could. I think I'm actually getting some indentation damage there. Oh, little focus, are you going to do anything? No. Let's move back a bit, maybe that'll help you. There we go. No. It just looks like there's a bit of indentation damage there already from where I've been trying to get this thing in. Either these are just meant for show, or there's some sort of flaw here. Well, let's try the silver sword instead, just in case that's easier to get into. Huzzah! We've done it! And by we, of course, I mean me, but all the same. I'm sure you've helped. I'm sure you were egging me on. I could feel something there. Yeah, it was resistance from the, uh, from the thumb. Now, of course, we can't do it with this hand because it's just... What, what you really need is a skull that you can just sort of put in there so you can go... Alas, for Yorick, and Yum Horatio, and all that stuff. Let's just put that in the earth, uh, put it in the way, but we can move things around like that. Yeah, that looks fairly decent, although not entirely convincing as far as uh, stability is concerned. I mean, it's like he's the hunchback of the Witcher series. Seriously. I mean, it would be great if we could just sort of flex the back a, a bit. To sort of get this thing mm, into a more convincing pose, but right now it just looks like he's been working down the mines for god knows how long. Uh, yeah, I mean the overall look is great. I like the look of it. It's just the hunchbackness just kills any possible uh, fun you could have with it. There's some possibility, it's just, what's the point? Because it just feels like he's going to fall over. 
And maybe that's a, another problem with the hunchbackness. Uh, yeah. So can I, oh, on his belt, you've got one of his dragon hunting uh, pieces of equipment, or at least something he uses when he t took out Saskia in there, which uh, two. I might take him out, I mean, he used it to sort of fly her into the ground before doing what he had to do after that. The choice, of course, was uh, down to you. Um, yeah. A little disappointed. I mean, it does look good, and the plastic quality does feel pretty decent, although the colour of the hair does look like it's maybe taking a bit of a... Hmm. A wrong turn there. Good detail in the face. The armour looks close enough in its stylized form. Can I actually move these legs any other way? No, this one seems to be permanently attached to something. Of course, we do have these little holes here, which means potentially if you have some sort of stand, you might be able to keep them upright a little better. But uh, the fact that he's looking down at the ground, to make the most of this as a figure, if you're going to have this on display somewhere, you're going to have to have him high up so that you can actually be seen. The visual recognition software on the camera picks him up straight away, but uh, yeah, in all brutal honesty, he needs to be able to bend his spine. He needs to be out of this hunchback position, and there needs to be at least some sort of flexibility with the uh, with the hand there, and the legs need to be able to move a bit to uh, allow you to, you know, not have him rock back and forth like that. And of course, it would be nice to be able to put the uh, steel sword to good use. Um, can I recommend it? No. 